Mr. McGuire, you have three minutes. Good morning. Uh, um, I will try and be as succinct as I possibly can. Tim McGuire, I'm president of QP Local 79, representing City of Toronto inside workers who deliver services on your behalf to Toronto's communities. Uh, in broad strokes, uh, uh, Local 79 uh, feels that the recommended 2014 operating budget seems to be a good start document, but a better budget needs to be built before the budget process concludes in January. Recommended budgets for divisions tend to settle on maintaining service levels from 2013 rather than investing in new services or in undoing the damage of cuts that have happened over the past few years in order to help rebuild our city. There are some service enhancements which are good, but across the board, the budget could do more for Toronto's communities. Uh, in September, QP Local 79 participated in the service level reviews by attending each of the standing committees at those committees, we pointed out that in division after divi division, budget targets were being met through gapping and staff vacancies. Staff vacancies mean service cuts. This budget and its promise to fill these vacancies is a good start. But in the end, results must be seen in frontline jobs filled, not just promises. In many instances, the 2014 operating budget refers to aggressively hiring aggressive hiring policies in order to fill the vast number of vacant positions it remains to see what actual staffing levels will look like. I'm just going to give some examples. MLS, 50 positions need filling. City planning um, has significant increases to its services levels for 2014 and only projects 12 new positions. IT, 171 vacant positions projected for the end of 2013. This is startling for such an important internal service for the city. The staff recommended operating budget appears to be a status quo budget with some targeted enhancements and we want to recognize that those enhancements are important, particularly the enhancements at uh, museums, uh, cultural services. Uh, we're not sure all the dollars need, that need to be there associated with the recreation service plan are there. Um, there are some other issues that need to be addressed before the budget process is finished and children's services, 19,000 children remain on waiting list. There are new monies from the province and this budget needs to include a message to the public that the damage done to services there is undone. Engineering and construction services, contracting out remains a major issue for Local 79 and we've said in the past and we'll say it again, we think this needs to be reviewed and that the city needs to develop its own internal capacity to handle support for the city's development projects. And 311, no additional customer service representatives, um, but we know that 311 is strained to perform the service it needs to, needs to perform. Um, again, IT, uh, extremely low. The number of vacancies is extremely high. In shelters, the city is failing to invest resources to help build its own capacities as well. Um, there are some contracting out issues or okay. uh, contracted services there, and we think the city is able to provide them. That's done? All right. Thank you, Mr. McGuire. Okay. Are there any questions of Mr. McGuire? Councillor Vaughn. Are there any other service areas that cause concern? Uh, yes. Um, one of the areas, I was just about to mention shelters. There's some contracting out issues or contact of services that are about to happen, and we think that uh, the city should consider that carefully. Uh, High-quality, award-winning standards in the city-delivered shelters, and if there's a possibility of ensuring that those standards are met through direct service, that should happen. <coughs> SDFA which includes the Toronto Office of Partnerships and uh, um, other areas. The SDFA is currently um, tasked with a number of significant projects that affect service delivery for Toronto's communities. Um, the SDFA was directed, uh, sorry, uh, Council directed SDFA to increase investment in the Community Partnership Investment Program, but staff are recommending against this increase in the budget. Um, there's the Job Quality Assessment Tool and Living, living Wage uh, that's uh, going to be developed or supposed to be developed, but this division has to have the resources to make sure that happen. And similarly, the social development dashboard and strong neighborhoods matrix, that's important work. This division needs to be staffed appropriately to make sure that's the case. Um, there could be other areas, but I'll, I'll leave All it right. at that. Just Thank I want to make two more points in terms of uh, two valuable things I think Local 79 could add to this discussion Same. because we're a partner. We're doing a survey of our members on services on staffing levels, and we're going to hear from our members, frontline workers, what the impact on service cuts to them has been, to them as workers and to the services yeah, of the Metro Toronto. And you can see our webinars on the budget on our local. That's labour negotiation, Mr. McGuire. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor uh, Pasternak, sorry, Councillor Layton first. And Thank you very much. Have, have your workers been consulted to this point about the budget and efficiencies that, uh, that could be found? Uh, they haven't. 
it's not a, a, this may not be a clear answer. I think there's been an improvement uh, in the uh, provision of information to Local 79 on the exact impact of, on, on jobs that our members do. Uh, uh, I want to thank uh, City Manager Joe Petticetti and HR uh, Bruce Anderson. They've met with us and they're giving us more details than they have in the past. Because when you see a budget, you'll see 100 positions and it doesn't say what which about the feedback about how we can actually improve the budget? How can we find efficiencies from the frontline workers telling us? So they haven't been consulted by the city, but that would involve us, and we're doing a survey of our members. We've got uh, a few hundred responses coming into a survey that we sent to members about services they deliver and how the staff gapping has impacted them as workers. Uh, there are issues associated with uh, not having enough staff and doing more and more with less and less, mm -hmm. uh, and the impact on the services they deliver. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor uh, Councillor Pastor. Sorry, Councillor Davis, outside committee first. Um, some of us as councillors have certainly noticed uh, the shortage of staffing and the impact on services in places like MLS, um, buildings. Um, is there a particular, are there particular divisions where you have seen um, the impact on services most specifically? Anecdotally, all of them. <laughs> okay. But uh, we're hearing the, the, uh, the comments coming out of buildings, we're hearing from MLS. Um, uh, we're hearing uh, from uh, from TESS um, that there are some concerns. That's a little more difficult to sort out because of what the ratios have been might not be the same now. It's a different matrix. Um, children's services uh, okay. on down the line. And when is your survey, when are the survey results? Results are coming in now, so there are interim results, but people are, are our members are telling us uh, that there's impact on services and an <coughs> impact on them. Um, but we'll have a fuller report in January before the budget process is concluded. We'll, walk, uh, we're, we'll share that information. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have one other, two others, Councillor Pasternak and then Councillor Bardinetti. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, um, you, mentioned, you mentioned 311 and uh, we, had, we had 50 vacancies and we had approved funding to, to fill those vacancies. We received uh, 6,000 applicants and we were unable, or that department says, they were unable to find uh, 50 qualified uh, candidates for the, the 50 positions. And I would also just throw in there, because my time is limited, is we have about 1,800 people leaving the city every year, retirements, transfers, they leave the workforce or, or what have you. So we have a moving target when it comes to our, our human resources. Do you, do you think 100% employment uh, is, is an unrealistic uh, uh, goal? Uh, are you advocating 100% employment or we try and get as close as we can, we fund it and we try and fill it? <laughs> uh, uh, the, 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 the notion of full employment is coming to my mind and, and that used to be around 3% when I was going through university, but it's not there anymore. But we understand, we understand that there's, there's a targeted gapping to deal with fluctuations like that, but in most divisions, the city's far in excess of what it's claimed to targeted gapping is, and there's okay. work that can be done to make sure that it meets it. Great, thank you. Councillor Bird and Eddie, that one took a, a minute to ask the question. <laughs> Thanks. Mr. McGuire, sorry, thank yes. you. <laughs> um, my time's only my time here. Uh, in terms of the uh, um, the new the new uh, community centers that are opening, uh, as you know, in Ward 35, we I, at the beginning of the term we kept that in in operated by the city. Yes. Uh, previously, they were some some reason looking to outsource, outsource that or have somebody come in uh, to operate it. So, looking at those three community centers, how many uh, how many staff do you predict will be required or needed in, in that or will it will it be a movement from other staff or a direct hire i'm not i'm not familiar with how many staff per center that takes in uh, you're talking about all of these centers are they going to be direct or? the three new community centers that are opening up right i'm not familiar with which ones are direct and which ones aren't okay yeah so okay they're happy to discuss that and okay yeah. and uh also with uh mls yeah. in terms of the gapping there what are you finding uh with that particular division. As I said in the service review uh, part, uh, it seemed that the division was making strides, making efforts to fill positions, but we don't actually have the numbers yet. I, when we looked at the documents in terms of actually how many have been filled and how many are still outstanding. Okay. okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you.